We are born of the blood, made men by the blood, undone by the blood. Our eyes are yet to open. Hey guys, we're back. So, um, you saw 25A, where I was having some issues, so we're going to follow Garman's advice by, uh, as, as in, when the, <clears throat> when the night is dark and the beast loom large, seek ye a holy chalice. Yes, we're going to the chalice dungeons which are procedurally generated and a little boring because of that so I'm gonna talk about a whole bunch of stuff on the way you know so we're gonna be roaming around just kinda leveling up you know uh, the grind but you know there's bosses that you don't see anywhere else so I think it's good to uh, to actually do so we're going to play around in the Chalice Dungeons. So, um, one of the cool things that I heard about today, actually, was uh, James Gunn, director of Slither, and more uh, famously, Guardians of the Galaxy. But I mentioned Slither for a very particular reason. Beautiful. And, yeah, there's... One other person in here, though, around my level range. Um, so, uh, James Gunn, the director of said films, uh, he posted a thing on his, um, on his Twitter where he was talking about how in Hall H at Comic-Con, uh, for the Sony panel, he'll have a film, oh, there's actually a lot of people. Look at that. Um, he'll have something to announce over there, right? In Hall H at Comic-Con. Now, the interesting thing is behind the, uh, the you know, on, on the picture that he actually posted had a, uh, a symbol that was scratched into a bloody wall. I didn't mean to throw that. Um, a symbol that was scratched into a, uh, uh, you know, like piece of metal or or a, or a wall, um, in what looked like blood. So obviously this is this is a horror themed thing that he's uh, that he's looking that that he's going to direct. So the interesting thing is, it kind of looks like it might be a Bloodborne movie. Why? Because Sony. And also, um, are you coming up here? No. Whoa! Jeez, dude. 
Yeah, this place is fun. All right, buddy. Take that. But the symbol looks suspiciously like the air rune. Uh, that's that's air as in, you know, someone who receives an inheritance. Uh, rune. Which we haven't found yet, but we will find it. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh... It's looking like a Bloodborne movie, maybe, on the horizon. Um, we'll probably still be playing when Comic-Con comes, you know, when Comic-Con happens. So I will keep you guys abreast of the updates. Wah! And, whoa, hey, poison. Not, not a fan of that. All right, so here's an interesting mechanic that you guys haven't seen yet because we haven't gotten that far in the game um, but there are bell ringing women that can summon in uh, that can summon in uh, uh, PvP players right well they can also summon in monsters this will show up more in later areas of the game but it's showing up in this chalice dungeon for our playthrough first but yeah, they'll keep generating until you kill the uh, until you kill the bell ringing woman, and then they're fine. Ah, crap! Do I still? Have, I do. Now well, let's take an antidote. Oh crap! You, sir, are aggravating. Come on. That's right. Too slow. Ah, crap. So, there's a whole bunch of enemy types and things, uh, especially bosses, that you never see. But, also, there are uh, reskins and different... Uh, versions of bosses that show up. So that bowl that I just broke produces mist. When it produces mist, it makes it hard to see, obviously, and that way they can uh, they can trap you. So the goal of going here... See, because I can hide in that smoke and then just come out at you. Um, the goal for coming in here is this switch. So now a door somewhere is unlocked. Mmm, tea. But yes, Bloodborne movie. Um, honestly, I don't know how to feel about it. I think that James Gunn would do a good job, but video game movies do not have a good pedigree. Um, you don't even have to look very far. You know, Tomb Raider came out this year, and it wasn't very good. Um, you know, it, it didn't really uh, do very well at the box office, and it was critically, you know, kind of panned. No one really cared about it. Um, so yeah, you know, and and with now, if you're gonna do a Soul Series game, a, a Soul Series movie, I mean, uh, Bloodborne is probably one of the best candidates. Why? Because it has, um, it has the most. Uh, for a straightforward story you know there, there's a lot going on and it has some very interesting elements that's the door that was unlocked so before we go out there we're actually going to explore it has a lot of interesting elements for example transforming weapons that would look really cool on screen and uh just see and and look at this these are basically the ends of the room being attached together. Kind of like the uh, locking system that they have in Doom, so you can make your own levels, where they just kind of interlock together, the, the rooms do. Hello. Yay. But yeah, I'm hoping to power up, basically, in here. 
because that's what these are basically meant to do. They're meant to be things that you can kind of run to have new little areas. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I, I think it could be a very interesting idea. But it, I see it also going belly up in a few ways. Because, you know, there might be studio involvement. They might go for a PG-13 rating, which would just be catastrophic for a series like this. You know, any uh, Dark Souls or Bloodborne game would have to be at, you know, ha it would have to be R. I got screwed over for coins. Yeah, what you gonna do? See what I mean about the range of that hit? It's super good. I feel like I'm waking something up. <laughs> okay. Blood vials, thank you. But yeah, this is one of the big places where you're gonna need a torch. Because you're running around. And it is completely dark. Nothing but messages here. Well, great. So this was a dead end. And and this is what you encounter a lot um, as well, because they're, I mean, these are, are locked geometries, but you can, uh, you can basically post ones that are procedurally generated, and if you know the code, you can put them in and, and you know, go to other dungeons. It's actually how people have figured out to, how to uh, uh, data mine it and get, like, old boss, you know, bosses that were never used and that kind of stuff. And they've actually posted the uh, dungeons where they exist. Ah, uh, crap, I got all turned around. Okay, I know where I'm going now. Um, so, you know, that, that is an interesting idea. But a lot of people whined about these because they weren't, you know, they, they, they aren't a, uh, a big part of the game. But they made a big deal out of them and they they can get very formulaic and boring. I've gone through most of the regular ones, you know, the, the ones that um, aren't procedurally generated, and I can attest they're, they, they can be a bit formulaic and boring. When they could have, you know, had a little bit more creativity. So, look, you've got your, uh, where is it there? You've got the sign of the hunter. So, I recently watched the, uh, the three movies that are on Netflix, the Golden Arc of Berserk. Yeah, here's one that, here's a boss that you never see. He's never outside of Chalice Dungeon. So, Berserk is a, uh, is a anime and manga that the director of these games, or most of them at least, um, and president of From Software, uh, Miyazaki, he loves uh, Berserk, right? So there are a lot of references to Berserk in, uh, in Dark Souls and uh, Bloodborne. So, uh, the, the Eclipse Sun that's in Berserk is on, uh, is from Berserk, uh, the, the Eclipse Sun in Dark Souls 3 is from Berserk, just straight pull. Wow, why is that doing such little damage? That's crazy. Yeah, done. Prey slaughtered. Beautiful. A depth bloodstone two, and uh, bloodstone shard. Okay. So obviously we're a little over leveled for this area. Um, yeah. Tomb mold. Mold that grows from rotten flesh and blood inside the old labyrinth matures to bear giant spores. Nothing really uh, useful lore wise there. And the the actually the messengers. In here, 
they're straight from Berserk. They're they're red in Berserk, and they're actually evil rather than being good. Um, or at least non-hostile to us, which I guess is as far as you can get to being good in the Bloodborne universes. You're not attacking me right now, so you're good. Um, but yeah, um, if you're under 18 or um, graphic violence or sex uh, bother you, uh, don't watch it. It's great, but don't watch it. <laughs> it's uh, everything you could possibly think you would be rated TVMA for. It is. Um, the Berserk, I mean. I expected there to be a lot of um, gory violence, and that didn't bother me, but I did not expect the, uh, oh, hello, the, uh, the, the sex that happened to be in the story. Um, most of it, well, actually, all of it was, it was integral to the plot. No, not all of it, but most of it, um, was integral to the plot, but, but still, I, w I was surprised at the amount. Oh, come on now. Back off, back off, back off. Yeah. And he's throwing poison knives. Not a fan. Not a fan, my friend. Not a fan. But yeah, you can see this is a... Uh, this is a... Blood vial just drain, you know? Um, but it should make us stronger, and then I might have to do some blood file farming afterwards. So, this is what it looks like when you haven't unlocked the door yet. So, you know, obviously it's locked by a device, we gotta go find the switch. Once we find the switch, then we'll be good. Well, yeah, uh, Berserk is, is very interesting, and it's, it's actually, you know, it, it's, it's good. But if you are disturbed by mature content, or you're under 18, please don't watch. <laughs> it's... It's graphic, um, but yeah, I've I've never had I've never seen someone have sex at someone, but now I have. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's that, and now I can totally see the uh, inspiration. You know, I can see uh, how much inspiration actually came from Berserk. And, you know, its story and its characters and all that. Well, for example, Artorias from Dark Souls 1 is straight up just Guts, the main character from uh, from Berserk. Because he's a swordsman who, you know, always rides alone. And he's got this female warrior that's, you know, kind of his, his girl. And, uh... And, and he... Whoa, what is up with this? It is a trap that summons them? I don't remember that. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. This is bad. But yeah, that is a button that just straight up summons four. Well, at least it's not a bell ringing woman. That's something. Okay. Okay. So he didn't follow. That's good. This is a positive move. Oh, I was too slow. Enjoy! <laughs> that worked out. Remember, this is the chalice that we got for beating um, Bloodstar Beast. So, we might be a little over level. Ritual Blood 2. Uh, ritual items. Uh, one of the basic ingredients used to satiate a holy chalice is this uncoagulable blood. When all is melted in blood, all is reborn. So, it's, it's blood that won't clot. And apparently that's seen as holy by these people. Yarnamites. Okay, 
what we got. I hear someone. Hello! We do have a bell ringing woman. I heard the bell faintly. I think for the, uh, the sinister bell, they actually use a bell sound effect that's played backwards. So it sounds off. You know, they like bend it so it's off key. And also, it's, it's backwards. Yeah. She's generating them. I gotta find her. Whoa. Okay, I know where she's coming from now. We're gonna avoid you. Bye. It's coming from over here. Whoa. Hey, look, there's a lot of people here. Nope. You. See, because then they all die. Which is not true for some uh, some areas in the game, where the instead of uh, instead of dying, they'll just take a huge debuff because the bell ringing woman actually buffs them up, and then you know al also continuously. Um, no, I actually want the gun, um, and also can. Whoa! I forgot that you roll. It's been a while since I've been down here. There we are. Boom. Ha ha. So, I mean, that's that's kind of just a, you know, reskinned enemy, but you know, it's it's something at least. Operate the device. It's unrocked now. Okay. So, um, let let's remember what these labyrinths are actually for. These are the labyrinths underneath, uh, under underneath the land where Yarnum sits, and you know specifically Bergamorth. Um, and the scholars at Bergamorth would explore these tombs, and eventually they found a holy augur, and they encountered what's termed only as the Eldritch Truth. Um, I'm not going to give you the et entomology of that word because it's actually kind of a spoiler. No, actually, no. We've hit 40 in sight. Yeah, so um, Eldritch is a word that actually was invented by H.P. Lovecraft. It's a word that means uh, of or pertaining to the Elder Gods. Obviously made up by, you know, H.P. Uh, Lovecraft for a reason. He also made up another word, Cyclopean. You know, like Cyclops. Here we go. Here's another boss. So trio boss fight. That's always fun. Uh, I think we got one with a gun. And two that don't. Nope, not in this one. Yep, we do. Look at that. Oh, I missed it! I want to take out the gun guy first. Where's the gun guy? There he is! See, so... You dodge around the melee guys. Take out the gun guy first. That'll help you. Um. So, uh. They, they found. A. They found the Eldritch Truth down here. They discovered the Great Ones down here. In these labyrinths. Haha, <laughs> got one. Oh, crap. Come on. Oh, he got mad. Now he's not using his gun anymore.
there's one. Okay. So, they were exploring down here, and they found the uh, remnant of the Thumerian people. The Thumerian people were the previous civilization to the Yarmites. Um, we haven't really encountered any lore about the Thumerians uh, so far in the playthrough, but just trust me, the Thumerians were the uh, were the previous... There we go. Were the previous uh, civilization who also discovered the Great Ones. And that's kind of how uh, the Yarnamites discovered it. It was from the Thumerian writing and artifacts and things like that. So, um, Lawrence, who is the, uh, what is the guy from the cutscene after we beat, uh, Vicar Amelia, he, yeah, there we go, uh, he and a few other, um, a few other, uh, students from Bergenworth, they discovered a, uh, they discovered holy blood, Un, you know, which would be blood of a, of a great one down here in the tombs. Um, Willem didn't like it. Willem uh, did not believe that the blood was something that you should be messing around with. Um, and he was right, because obviously the beast plague happened and everything else, and it was all because of the blood. So, uh, so there was a split, an ideological split between the healing church and Bergenworth to the point that even the woods around Bergenworth were forbidden to go into by, uh, for, for Yarnamites. So, whoa, uh, so, Bergenworth uh, continued on uh, past uh, past Willem's life, it seems. Because if you remember in the lecture hall, um, they said, if only, yeah, the student outfit said, if only uh, Master Willem could see, he, uh, he would be brought to despair. You know, by what the... Uh, Oh, crap. There's a cannon or something somewhere. Yeah, there's a cannon up there. Well, crap. This might be beyond our ken. Okay. We want to get past them. Find the bell ringing woman. Bell ringer. Bell ringer, where are you? Are you up here? You should be. I think I found her. She's over there. Hello? Yes. Beautiful. There's two? There looks to be two. I think I just found the other. No, she's not up there. Um, so there was an ideological split between the um, between the Healing Church and Bergenworth to the point that they didn't even allow Yarnamites to go to Bergenworth anymore. You were the one firing the cannon. You're the idiot. Boom. <laughs> not that it does anything. But, you know, it's interesting that I can do it. So, the end of, uh, the end of Willem and Lawrence's partnership, um, signaled a bad time in Yarnum, which seems to be, uh, what it mostly happens in Yarnum. Yeah, that's a straight-up ghost. That's really weird. Um, yeah. So... Uh, a, a bad time for all involved, and I believe that uh, Willem, who we killed, but I don't think he actually uh, 
I don't think that was actually him or, you know, it, it was it was a representation of him um, because of our insight rather than his, uh, his actual form. Um, I, I think because, you know, they say if Willem could see, which leads me to believe that he's dead. But, you know, I'm not Vati. Don't don't uh, quote me on that. But, you know, I, I've already said that, you know, there there are times that I think that Vati doesn't exactly have things correctly because he doesn't believe that uh, the Yonamites can be wrong. Um, so, whoa, I hit another one of those traps. That sucks. Ugh. Oh, jeez. Okay. You first, boy. All right. So, um, Master Willem uh, lost the lost lost his. I would say probably his his best students to Lawrence and his. Oh, look at that! Is that an elevator? It is awesome. Of course, it's not an elevator it's somewhere I want to be. Okay, and get back in. Take me up, take me up, take me up, take me up, take me up. Uh. Okay. So, uh, Master Willem lost most of his school to the, to the Healing Church, and the Healing Church began its research into blood administration, which turned out to be very useful, but um, had some bad side effects. Um, honestly, I don't know why there are snake people in the woods. I, I do think that due to the research that they were doing at Bergenworth, that's why we get the Garden of Eyes and things like that. I think that's how that happened is, you know, they, they were doing some research into insight and uh, they ended up turning into bug people. But it might have also been perversion from... Uh, from from the blood that might have made made its way out there, you know, some people might have gotten sick at Bergenworth and gone to Yarnum for blood ministration and uh, picked up a few things instead of getting them the cured. Okay, so I think I fully explored up here, but here, the the thing is, there's actually invisible walls in here. There aren't invisible walls in the main game that anyone's found, but there are invisible walls in the Chalice Dungeons, which makes you go, oh, crap. Oh, look. Oh, this is where I already was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 